Tacking your joint together can either make or break your TIG weld even before you try it. I'm gonna show you how to avoid ruining your nice passes and give you the best chance to make those welds look like a million bucks. How important do you think it is to tack something up? A lot of people think, whatever, just stick it together and I'm gonna weld it and make it look good. I'm gonna give you the answer to this question straight up. It's extremely important. There's a few things we're gonna go over here where I'm gonna show you how it can ruin your day. It can wreck the individual weld itself, or it can even wreck or shift the final dimensions of a project you're working on after you're done welding it. But there's one really important thing that's even more important about tacking that 95% of welders miss out on. And I'm gonna go over that third thing later in this episode. All right, the first thing that we wanna talk about here is tack placement. When I get set up to run a weld, I want to achieve something like this. I want consistent spacing with my stepping consistency, and I want my blended lines on the top and bottom to stay nice and straight. I wanna have the best chance to make everything look exactly the way I want it to, but one of the biggest mistakes that I see comes in the form of organizing where your tacks are going to be placed. If I were to go put tacks in a place like this on something like this here, how easy is it gonna to be to maintain a proper profile as I try and move over it? It's going to be almost impossible. Even more so, I got a tack in the way now that's gonna get in the way of trying to penetrate this joint. I wanna make things perfectly uniform. Having this stupid thing in my way is gonna be a big pain in the ass to deal with when I'm trying to keep a consistent profile over top of it. All the while, while I'm trying to deal with the normal things that I'm having to deal with, during a weld. So when setting up, why not place them here instead? On the corners here, we can keep them relatively small. We're gonna get some good heat and good filler onto them and use them as a proper point to start and finish a weld from. We will have a point where we're gonna put a little bit of filler and a decent amount of heat into. This is even gonna warm up the piece potentially a little bit for our start. And then another added bonus to having them here is by the end of this pass, my weld is gonna be extremely hot. Having your tack at the end like this provides a little heat catch for it. This will be for the end of the pass slightly so that as I come towards it screaming hot, it's gonna catch a little bit of my heat and prevent me from totally overheating. Again, like I said, when I am welding, I only wanna focus on my welding. I don't wanna to have to pay attention to any other stupid variables I have to deal with once I begin moving. The same thing with going around pipe. When I'm going around something, I'm always gonna put my tack either at a stop point or a start point, or most likely both. Plan this detail out. When I get set up for a project, I spend a good amount of time just staring at it, thinking about where I'm gonna put all of my tacks when I put the piece together. And as always, I thank myself for doing it later when I can just focus on making my welds look good and maintaining the size and profile that I want. I can throw down nice uniform passes. Nothing's gonna get in my way. This leads me to the second thing on this subject. And this is an important thing if you're fabricating anything or building any kind of structure or project. And this is the issue of tax breaking. When I begin welding and I hear something that sounds like a crack or a snap, and especially if I feel or see something shift, this is one of the most disheartening feelings. Sometimes this can even mean having to remove and redo one of the welds I've done already because I now have the risk of losing dimensional control of whatever it was I had just set up to weld. I only do TIG welding videos mostly on this channel, but on my own time, I definitely do my fair share of fab projects. I am extremely picky with my setup and ensuring the best and proper dimensions for every single project I do. If I do a shabby job tacking something up, there is a strong possibility that something's gonna break. And after taking all the time to set up my dimensions perfectly, I'm gonna mess that up. When I'm extensively TIG welding something out, I usually have to do dimensional control during and after a weld out procedure. Can you imagine how much more work this would be if I had a couple tacks that let go or broke? This would be a huge pain in the butt. Typically, we see a tack that looks like this, and these are easily susceptible to cracking. As you add heat and welding to another area on the piece, this little cutie here is gonna have to hold on for dear life. And chances are, most of the time, some of these little fellows are gonna break. Sad face. The way I usually do a tack is like this. Do you see how my first dab or two is blended side to side, kind of? And then, as I pull off here, I put a cold dab on top. By doing this, I've done a couple things. I have blended filler material into the base material properly and in more than one specific little location. I keep it relatively concave so it doesn't get too big, or like I said earlier, block penetration when I have to go over it later. I then give it one last dab, which is obviously a little bit cold, which is gonna add some reinforcement for strength to prevent the tack from breaking. So essentially here, I've done three dabs, but I've put them into shapes where I can easily pull around a corner like so 
and then leave comfortably from the other side. Every once in a while, under more load or having to jack things around or hit them with the hammer and stuff, some of these tacks are going to break. But giving yourself the best chance possible ahead of time is probably a good idea. Like I said, nothing is more of a bummer than having something like this let go when you're trying to focus on something like laying down nice dimes. So the third thing, this last thing is probably the most important thing that I guarantee most people have never even considered. And that is using tacking as an exercise to get ready for a full weld. Did you know that in my online program for TIG welding, for several of the joints that I teach, one of the most important things that we do for each of them is we practice a tacking exercise. We do this before we even start welding it. We scrutinize and break down each tack to see how they went even before welding the whole joint. And here is why. Somebody who is going to attempt something, whether they are a beginner or someone like myself in production who's possibly gonna do something I've never done before, when I'm doing a tacking exercise, I'm going to get the opportunity to see how a weld is going to behave at the start when I go to tack it. When I hit it with some heat and I add some filler, I'm gonna be able to see where the filler goes and how it settles. Especially when you're doing a tack like I just described a minute ago, not only am I gonna tack it, but I'm actually gonna do some manipulation with that tack almost gonna be like starting an actual weld. So why not do it and get this joint to show some of its cards ahead of time when you're just setting up instead of trying to figure all this stuff out on the fly once you begin an actual weld. Look at this joint here. This is a solid piece of round bar that's been machined down to a specific size. It has a piece of three millimeter plate on top of it or one eighth of an inch. So essentially something quite thick with a really thin plate that I have to weld on top of it. You can see what I've done here. I've dropped a couple tacks onto the joint and I've done a simple manipulation to see what the puddle is going to do if I were to have tried to move it. Obviously, usually my weld is gonna to go towards the thinner material. So performing a small exercise like this will show me if my torch angle or travel angle is enough to compensate for this variable and having to deal with it. Same as joints like this. This is positioned in a 90 degree angle. So performing a tacking exercise on this joint not only serves the purpose of putting the joint together, but it's also gonna show me how my angles are looking when I go to do my actual start. Pretty sneaky, right? There are so many things that I do with my setup, or sometimes I'm just a little unsure of how things are gonna go. So doing a small exercise like this, which you're gonna do anyway, like I said, doesn't only serve the purpose of putting the joint together, but it also shows you what's gonna happen when you weld it. These tacks I demonstrated are from this episode here. This breaks down pretty extensively how I went about tacking this joint together and then welding it out after the fact. It also talks really specifically about how I'm gonna plan my welds and the order that I'm gonna do them. And you can see me run these welds in between these tacks as controlled as I can. This is hands down one of the most important episodes I've done on this subject. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. Go do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. Go spread some positivity in the world we need it. If you're an arcade who watches the show every week, leave a dime in the comments below. I love seeing those. My name is Dusty for Pacific Arc TIG Welding. Phil and Chill, we will talk soon. Peace.